Welcome to the Bourbon Barkeep Lounge. My name is Curtis, and when you see the lounge, you know that it's a House Call Wednesday. House Call Wednesday are battles that we put together, and only one bottle can come out alive. Just kind of how it goes. Um, these battles can be based off of age, proof, pure curiosity at this point. So I hit the little randomizer button in, in my phone. It told me a battle and I pulled out said bottles that I don't know what they are. We have them in these little things and I hope that I labeled them right because then it gets weird. So far, so good. Before we jump into the battle, uh, go ahead, like, subscribe. Um, we, we love having you guys around and ladies. We don't discriminate. Everybody likes whiskey, right? Um, so while you do that, I'll pick up my glass, give a little swirl, and we'll jump right into glass A. Let's see, on the nose, whew, that is loads of sweetness. Cherry, cherry bubble gum. Some oak coming through, just all the sweetness, some vanilla frosting, I would say. I mean, that's more intense than like vanilla syrup, right? Like a vanilla frosting. A little bit of a, like a red apple. Pretty sure I've made this joke before, but if you haven't seen it, then I'm just gonna use it again. This smells, smells like a cavity waiting to happen. And how this was just corn and other things in a mash bill put into oak and it can come out that sweet is incredible. Let's dive into the taste. Cheers. A lot more cinnamon than I would have thought. Didn't get a ton on the nose, but nice spice up front immediately smooths out to uh, continued sweetness. Maybe like a, like a cinnamon roll, actually. Kind of on that first sip, kind of a nice bread, cinnamon, vanilla frosting still kind of continues there. Really nice finish. Um, felt it really into my chest, so nice, nice Kentucky hug, if you will. I mean, I guess if it's not from Kentucky, you can still call it a, a hug. So a nice hug. Um, tapered off a, a little bit, like didn't really hang around on my tongue too long, but it definitely lets you know it's what I would think is a little higher proof at least. Go back for a second sip, see if anything else develops. On the second sip, um, pretty much the same. Uh, maybe I got like a, maybe a kettle corn. Uh, which is always nice. The cinnamon is more like a red hot, uh, just kind of sticking with that sweetness. And like I said, I mean, the finish outside of the length, which is very good, not overly complex. Um, maybe some vanilla, kind of a creamy, if you will, but not much to write home about outside of a really nice, long lasting finish in your, your tummy tongue. Overall, really enjoyable pour. Um, the proof is definitely, I mean, definitely maybe strong. It's there, I hope, we'll see. Glass B, let's see what, what she's about. Let this open up a little bit. Ooh, like that too. It's gonna go like a pecan pie, some brown sugar in there, nice, nice like pie crust. I'd say some cherry, maybe a nice raspberry. But yeah, that, that bread is definitely there. Maybe like a raspberry jam and nice pecan, even like a, you know, the pecan pie like is in the oven and you can like 
roast the the nuts on them you know kind of get a nice little little roast pecan in there let's see what the taste has i didn't turn off the ac i'm not sure if the noise actually came through my mic but if there sounded like a monster car engine starting up in the background that was the ac so that made it weird so now i have to i i had to shut it off so you can actually hear me i've already had comments that the volume's low maybe it, i don't know i got nothing on that one but um yeah so we'll see how quickly i can knock out this review while the, the kids nap so that while they're sweating i'm drinking whiskey in my basement that's way too chilly Let's see what Glass B has on the tongue. I would say the nose leads to the palate, which is nice. I mean, it, some consistency is nice rather than a full curveball. Um, still pretty bready. I would say the raspberry goes away into more of a, maybe a plum or fig. Some cinnamon in there, nutmeg. Overall, enjoyable, depending on if you like more of a, a bready pour or a very sweet pour, um, you're gonna go glass A or B. Pretty similar in proof, probably. Um, this one, a smoother finish not as aggressive on the esophagus on the hug but it tends to linger more than class a as well so pros and cons now that i kind of know what i'm in for let's see what second sip has second sip enjoyable um, it kind of morphed into maybe a just barely overbaked cinnamon roll so you still kind of have that vanilla frosting on it. A lot more oak coming out on the second sip. Not in an overpowering way, just I didn't mention it in the first sip, and now I did. So it, it's here. Finish, still really enjoyable. Um, medium plus, feel like it sits, makes the mouth water, sits on the tongue a bit more, and then uh, just a nice, smooth, finish as it creeps down into your your chesticles i'm going to say that wraps up the tasting piece of it what i will do is go side by side one more time see if that helps my scoring but overall very solid pours um curious how they do on the the ranking scale so i'll be right back this one's not going to be enjoyable to score mainly because of how close it is and since I don't know the price, this is probably gonna boil down to bang for the buck. So what I will say to sway you all one way or the other is one's gonna be much sweeter, glass A, glass B with that nice pecan pie on the nose, cinnamon roll, very smooth finish. And usually when you say smooth, it's like not there I don't know how to describe it. I mean, it's a fantastic finish that you could sip on a nice summer night, but also still taste something. So there's that plus. Glass A, it's coming in hot, tastes hotter, more on like that cinnamon spice way, not in a um, harshness, going back to the red hot. But man, it is a fantastic nose great on the on the taste buds really enjoyed them so getting into the bourbon barkeep rankings or i guess scoring because there's only two to rank scoring system i'll flash it up there um, but we also do bang for the buck to where depending on what these are we try to stick to srp we'll just kind of see weller always kind of throws us for a loop because the SRP is what, like 50 bucks on most of them? And then they go for 200? Good times. Um, so we'll see how that plays into here. 
I always hope it doesn't because it makes it so much more complicated. Glass A, better nose, depending on what you want to taste, could be equal on the, on the taste buds and then finish if you want it hotter. You're gonna like this. I mean, it's not Elijah Craig barrel proof by any means. It, no, there's no way. And it's not that hot, but it lets you know it's there with a lot of cinnamon. So if you like cinnamon, like a good caramel apple, maybe some cherry bubble gum, this is you. I'm tempted to go 83. It's a great pour, really like it. I don't know how close I can get to fantastic. But I really like it. I'm going to go 83. Glass B on the other hand. Cinnamon roll in a glass. Nice, barely over-roasted cinnamon roll. Barely over-roasted pecan pie. The smoothness. Cut the top. Not, not a lot of heat. In a good way sometimes. Sometimes you just need to back off. You know? Just the breathing down your neck. It's like, God, it's... 85 and 80 percent humidity leave me alone glass b oh, man. it's tough i love cinnamon rolls love the finish you gotta like bready whiskey that's that's the hard part and i typically go more candy bar whiskey so i'm gonna go 81 they're so close both great pours 81 now, on to finding the battle in the iPad and figuring out at least the price of what we are tasting today. This is the really fun part of the show to where you get to see the top of my head because I look down at my iPad flex. It's like a second generation, so no big deal. Battery is about six minutes long, so we need to speed this up. Battle 209 got glass A at $50. And that is a phenomenal pour at $50. At $50, the bang for the buck would be... It's tough because you don't know age. I mean, that, does, that has to play a factor. Would I pay $50 for that? Absolutely. Over and over again. So I would say... 85. I mean, it's so good. Class B, where are we? 209, $100, double the price. Damn it. Um, I'd go 60. Is that right? 100's tough because nowadays, I mean, things are just so expensive. Um, I would pick a, a Elijah Craig barrel proof, a Larceny barrel proof over it, but keep in mind, I mean, that's completely different heat. I mean, I like high proof, but sometimes you just want to back off. So needless to say, uh, I punched in the scores real quick. Obviously, Glass A won. Um, what we, because it took senses, and it took bang for the buck at $50. So now I'll do the reveal. The problem is, is when it comes to bang for the buck, these can shift because, I mean, it, if this isn't available at $50 and it's available at 200 because we've had CYPB on the channel already, um, I mean, that, that changes bang for the buck because you're not getting it 50 um, Same idea with, you know, if it's a high age, whiskey and I mean it's a hundred dollars I mean maybe it's a steal we shall see 209 glass a Weller antique 107 my nightmare not in my mouth it's, it's a dream in my mouth for scoring it's a nightmare so I hope these tasting notes really help you glass B is the rebel 10 100 proof and I don't own rebel 10 so that means Noah, fellow bourbon barkeep, snuck a sample in here. Clever. Clever guy. All right. Um, well, that, that changes things. 
because the Rebel 10, 10 years, $100, I mean, it's a pretty good price. I believe it's a single barrel, and it is really damn good. I am going to change that. Bang for the buck is now. Where are we at? 10 years for the $10. How much higher can we go? Because I would pay... No, I'm not going to go that much higher. I'll go 65 It justifies the 10 year that it's been in the barrel, but ultimately it's $100. And there's a lot out there that's better at $100. That is a very, very good proof um, for that Rebel 10 now. It is perfectly proofed in terms of what that smoothness is. Um, if I wanted it any hotter, maybe it could go up to 107, but here we are. Um, so now bang for the buck at the 107. It's not 50, I could tell you that. I mean, pay it again and again, but I mean, secondary is like $150 probably. Good. I may still do. I'll. Damn it. Freaking Weller. I'm gonna go 62. I don't know why. 62. Does that change? Who wins? It's a tie. Do I keep it a tie? You can't keep it a tie. All right. I I gotta keep it, right? I mean, you can't score and just change it out of preference. So what did we learn today? Um, Weller 107. Uh, slightly overpriced, but ultimately it's still really good, even if you told me it was 150. Not a small chunk of change, but really good. I think the thing that Weller 107 has going for it, and this may ramble, so we'll see how much of this gets left in, is with it being that lower proof, it is so good. You have so many people looking for the proof and looking for the barrel proofs and all this stuff to where the 107 is there, but so smooth at the same time. And still credit to Rebel 10 with the 100 proof to where it punches there, it lingers there, but ultimately it doesn't overpower you and make you have the sweats. Uh, and sometimes, you know, I just don't want to sweat. So, is it a duplicate Rebel 10 that is to 107? No. Weller 107 is so much sweeter. Is it just as good? No. Not according to the senses. But when bang for the buck comes into consideration, if you have tried 107 and have not tried one the Rebel 10, it is definitely a snag even at a hundred dollars. I'm not backing it up, but it it punches there. I'll give them that. Man, do I hate ties. I never thought the bourbon barkeep lounge would turn into freaking soccer. So we'll be we'll be better next week. We will crown a winner. And as of right now I feel like we just had two high quality pours punch each other in the mouth a couple times and respect each other and walk away. And I guess I'm going to leave it at that. Like, subscribe, do the stuff. We'll see you all again.